everybody. Um, so Professor Johnson might have explained, but um, I have a moot practice today, and I think it's just going to run a bit over. So I'm not just I'm not sure how much of class I'm going to be missing. And I thought it would be best if I did my article summary um, by video, uh, just in case. Um, so the article that I did today was by um, Jacques Ranciere, and um, it's called The Pensive Image, and it's in the book The Emancipated Spectator. Um, so I started by looking up the book more generally because I wanted to provide a bit more context um, to the chapter. So the book um, argues that the artistic procedures of, an, of the avant-garde did not produce politicized and revolutionary ideologies, but sustained them. So this chapter specifically, um, or the thesis of the chapter specifically, is that the pensive image provides a zone of indeterminacy in relation to which emancipatory, emancipatory thought is possible. Um, and so a zone of indeterminacy is what exists between art and non-art, thought and non-thought, activity and passivity. And uh, photography is often found in this zone. Um, and indeterminacy problematizes the gap um, that Ranciere tried to signal um, in the book uh, exists between the two ideas of the image, the common notion of the image as a duplicate of the thing, and the images conceived of as an artistic operation. Um, so he uses a couple of examples uh, to demonstrate the zone of indeterminacy. So the first is um, Barth's camera, uh, camera lucida, lucida, and pardon my pronunciation on French and attempted Spanish, it's, I butcher it. Um, and so, and then the other example that he provides is uh, Gardner Lewis's pain in handcuffs. And I found the second example to be particularly interesting. Um, and uh, Rassier uses this uh, to discuss the ways that a, photogra a photograph displays indeterminacy. The viewer knows that the man in the photo is going to die, yet there's nothing in the photo that tells us he will die. Um, the viewer needs to realize that the photo represents Lewis Payne to realize that he's going to die. Um, and so to make the effect of the photo come into full fruition, um, Barth had to create a short circuit between historical knowledge and the subject represented and the material texture of the photo. Um, so that's all explained at page 112. Um, so then uh, Rassiart also talks about the ethical regime of images um, and how in first century Rome, um, Pliny, Pliny um, the elder, uh, lost his temper with collectors who were filling their art with gallery, um, with statues, but they didn't know who they represented. Um, the statues were there for their art and not as images of um, ancestors. So um, uh, Ranciere says that Pliny's position is characteristic of what I call the ethical regime of images. In that regime, a portrait or statute is always an image of someone and derives its legitimacy from the relationship with the human being or the god that it represents. Um, so I thought that this was interesting, um, in terms of thinking about, um, Inuit film and also, um, Indigenous art and artifacts, um, that have historically been taken out of, taken out of their context, um, and placed in museums or placed on display for non-Indigenous people, um, to view without them understanding or knowing, um, the full context behind which the art was made. Um, so that's kind of the relationship that I saw existing there. Um, and then near the end of the article, Ranciere talks about the idea of pensiveness, uh, which is first described to Honor de Balzac in Saracene in the 1830s uh, through Barth's famous analysis in 1970. Balzac ends his narrative indeterminately by finally leaving the protagonist pensive with the suggestion of a continuing and undefined thought process that goes beyond the narrative. Uh, Ranciere goes on to discuss the incidental micro-events described in Madame, Madame Bovary by Flaubert. Uh, the micro-events are like silent pictures inserted to also and beyond the narrative. Um, and so the quote that I exerted uh, ex took out from this section, sorry, was um, that the pensiveness of the image is then the latent presence of one regime of expression within another, and that's on page 124. 
Um, so that was just a general summary of the article. I will say that I struggled and I had to read this article a couple times. I found it to be slightly confusing. Um, but I'm sorry that I can't be there for the discussion. Um, and if I am, then feel free to ask questions. Thanks.